Hey, what's up guys, how you doing? Matt Tonelli here. Today answering questions for you guys on uh, what are the housing arrangements like in the minor leagues and in the major leagues. So um, we're gonna go through all the different teams that I played for from the lowest part of the minor leagues all the way up to the major leagues. This is for, for home games. So we already talked about on the road, how you're usually gonna stay in hotels, um, but at home, depending on which organization you're with, which league you're in, um, it always changes what you're doing at home. So we'll start when I first got drafted, got sent to the Eugene Emeralds, which was uh, short season A ball, right out of the draft. Um, and how they did it there was for home games, we stayed in a hotel that was basically downtown Eugene, right? So um, basically I think I paid like, I think it was like six, $7 a day, something like that, uh, maybe $10 a day. Um, would just go to the team and the team basically took care of the hotel for us um, Interesting thing when I got there again, I got drafted. I had no idea how it worked And so I just assumed that I got my own hotel room with like you know, I envisioned walking in and having like this Huge suite and like this, you know kitchen and big bathroom and all this stuff And I remember I got my key from the hotel lobby. I walked upstairs put my key and I opened the door and it was this little tiny room and there was a teammate of mine sitting in there already. So I thought I had my own room, did not have my own room. And we had a really small hotel room. Um, first room in ever was Dave Freeze, who a lot of you guys probably know, won a World Series with the Cardinals, was a World Series MVP, I believe. Um, now he plays for the Pirates. So he was my first roommate, opened the door, walked in, said, hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. And um, that was it. So that was my first experience in pro ball. Uh, moved up to sh to low A ball um, in Fort Wayne, Indiana for the Fort Wayne Wizards. Now they're called the 10 Caps. Um, when I got there, basically every time you get moved up to a team, um, if you get called up during the season, the team will put you in like a hotel for like three, four, five days to get you situated. So move into a quick hotel and then after that you got to find a place to stay. So in Fort Wayne, all the players stayed in apartments. So I had to find an apartment quick. I actually ended up jumping in with a couple of my other teammates that were there. Um, I was only in Fort Wayne for like two weeks, so I honestly don't even remember who I roomed with. I think I think I was in there with Wade LeBlanc and Kyle Blanks, but I honestly can't really remember. It was like really short part of my minor league career. Um, what I do remember is we stayed on a, the apartments were kind of on a golf course. And so I'm a horrible golfer. I remember golfing. We got free golfing um, because we lived there. And I can remember the first ball I teed off, I was thinking like, man, these apartments are really close to the fairway here. So I teed off, sliced the crap out of a ball and just drilled this person's apartment. Like right, it was like literally right there. The ball went straight to the right and just smashed off it. And I took off and I never finished. I, I just took one shot and that was the last time I played on that course. Um, so from there, uh, next season, played in Lake Elsinore, California, in high A in the California League. The different thing about that league, or at least that team, is that we stayed with host families. So how a host family works, basically you just get put right in with a family. They, they um, you know, families volunteer to house players. And so, you know, I showed up and they just said, I don't know how they decide, but they basically said, here's your family. And, you know, it's a little bit different and awkward. You meet them. And they say, hey, what's up? You're living with us for the next six months. Um, so I got really lucky. Got like the greatest family of all time. Still keep in contact with them. I lived there in 2007, so 10 years ago. And, um, you know, still keep in contact. They were awesome. I've been very fortunate in my life with host families um, that I've never had a bad one. So um, so stay with them. Basically, just they got an extra room in the house and, you know, you jump in. Sometimes you get multiple players to a to a host family, I was the only one, so it was just me. Um, and so, yeah, it, that was probably one of my favorite experiences out of all my housing arrangements was living with them. Um, got called up that year to Double A. Got to stay in a, again, they put us in a hotel when we first got called up. It was like the Motel 6. Only thing I remember, oh, sorry. Team was in San Antonio, uh, San Antonio Missions. Double A in the Texas League. Put us in a hotel, I think it was a Motel 6. One of the main things I remember is, uh, so it was Chad Huffman and I were sharing a hotel room. Um, Chad now plays for the St. Louis Cardinals. And all I remember is crickets were jumping up through the sink and through the uh, tub all night and like just hopping all over the place in our hotel room. So 
that's one of my main memories from there. I stayed there for like three, four nights, and then Chad and I got a, uh, uh, we found an apartment. So we jumped in this nice apartment, stayed there. We're only up in San Antonio. I was there for about two months, I think. So we stayed in a hotel, or excuse me, not a hotel, an apartment for those two months together. Um, next year was, it's kind of crazy, I'll, thinking back now to all the places I stayed. Next year, got called up to AAA in Portland, Oregon, in the uh, Pacific Coast League. Um, first year, I stayed in a, an apartment with um, Wade LeBlanc. So me and him split an apartment, two bedroom. Um, interesting thing about that, just thinking back real quick, we had no car, so neither of us brought a car. So you would take like this, I don't know what, it's like a train kind of thing to and from the stadium. If you're from the Portland area, I bet you know the name. Well, I'm sure you know the name. You can leave it in the comment section. I can't remember what it's called. Um, or we'd have like a buddy pick us up and drive us to the stadium. So a lot of walking. We were about 10, 15 minutes outside the city. So we're in like a little suburb area. Um, my next year in Portland, um, well, I guess I should go back. Got called up to the major leagues that year. When I went to the major leagues, first got in and they, again, they just put you in a hotel. Um, I ended up liking the hotel. It was right next to the stadium. I can't remember if it was a Marriott or what it was, but it was something, it was like literally you come out of the hotel and the Impeco Park is like right there. And so I ended up really liking it. So when my week or so of whatever ran out that they gave me for free, I just stayed. I just never moved out and um, just paid on my own. So stayed there in the major leagues, which was really nice, right downtown, all the restaurants and everything right there. Um, next year, I went, they sent me back to Portland. Um, so I went back to Oregon. This time I stayed downtown, like a 30 second walk from the stadium, ended up staying by myself, got a one bedroom, stayed by myself, not the nicest place in the world, but um, it was nice. It was right there. So, um, you know, I could just the year before, walking all over the place, having no place to go, you know, not having a car, not being able to go to eat very much, it just, I didn't like it as much, so I ended up just going right downtown, um, and so it worked out well. Um, from there, let's see, what happened after that? The next year, I think I was, um, oh, the following year, I was injured the whole year, so um, I was in Arizona. I stayed at spring training. I broke my wrist. You guys, if you haven't seen the story about my wrist and all that stuff broken, go to the video I threw up last week about why I was why I never got called back up to the major leagues. Um, but broke my hand and hurt my wrist and was in basically all my rehab was done in spring training in Peoria, Arizona. So when that happened, they put me up in an apartment. They put me and my wife up, who's at the time was my girlfriend, I think. Yeah, she was. Um, so we stayed in an apartment basically right across the street from the stadium. And it was a really, really nice apartment. I was in, I was in the 40 man at that time. I was actually on the 25 man at that time. And then when you got injured, they moved me to, um, I don't even know how, the 60 day DL I think I was on or something like that. And so basically I was considered like I was up in the major leagues, but I was injured the whole time. So, you know, they put me in a really, really nice apartment, which was, which was awesome. Um, and unfortunately I stayed there the whole summer cause I could never get healthy. I just kept getting surgeries. So, uh, the following year I ended up, um, they ended up uh, non-tendering me, which means I basically became a free agent and I ended up signing with the nationals. They sent me to play in AAA in Syracuse, New York for the Syracuse Chiefs. And so when I went there again, they put me in a hotel, first jumped up, got in the hotel for like a week or so. And then that gives you some time to find an apartment. I found a really nice apartment. Um, I don't know how to describe it. It was near the mall, <laughs> near the mall, I guess. Um, and so it was like an industrial type of, I don't know, it was a really nice apartment that I got to stay in that whole entire summer. I was with them for the whole, for the whole year. Um, next year, played for the Baltimore Orioles. And uh, I was sent to AAA again. It was in Norfolk, Virginia. And so I stayed right downtown Norfolk in an another really, really nice place. Um, was only there for like a month and a half, two months, because I got sent over to the New York Yankees. They were playing. <laughs> this is kind of crazy. Um, so usually in scranton Wilkesburg, that, that's usually where their home field is, but we were doing renovations on the stadium. So that season, we were actually playing in Rochester, New York, at um, the Red Wing Stadium. And so we were splitting it with them. And so it was really strange. We really didn't have a home stadium. And so I... Most of the players just stayed in the team hotel. There was a hotel right there, and we just stayed there. I just basically stayed there for the rest of the summer. My car was like my closet. My car was just full of clothes. I didn't even unpack everything because there wasn't a lot of room in the hotel room. And so, you know, I was just 
basically in hotels the whole summer, whether it was at home or on the road. So a really weird summer, um, being traded and, and all that stuff. Um, and then my last year, the, the next year, 2013, I was signed by the Cleveland Indians. They sent me to AAA again. And so that was in Columbus, Ohio, uh, in the International League. And so there, because if you guys, again, go back and watch my other video, I talked about being on the Phantom DL. I kind of had a feeling that I wasn't going to be there for a long time. I just... It, I just had a feeling I was going to get released or traded at some point. And so I never even got an apartment. I just, again, there's a team hotel typically. Um, I talked about when you get put up for like those first, that first week or so. I did the same thing again there where after the week, I just decided to stay there. I didn't even go look for an apartment because I didn't want to get an apartment, you know, get signed like a six month lease. And then all of a sudden after like a month, get released, which is basically almost what happened and then be stuck with paying for the next five months. Um, you know, interesting stuff you probably don't think about, like as a, um, if you're not a baseball player, you don't probably think that we have to figure this stuff out, but it's just like you went to rent an apartment anywhere. Like you're on your own, you do everything your own. It's not like the team is gonna like set you up with all this stuff. So you gotta figure out how long you're gonna rent for, you know, lease numbers, you know, um, looking at how much the rent is because, you know, again, as a player, depending on your level and how much experience you have, you know, sometimes you don't get paid a whole lot, especially in those early years. If you notice, I went from usually being with a roommate the first few years to then being on my own the last few years. That's because, you know, your first few years, you're making like, you know, 1500 a month, 2000 a month. And, you know, if you get an apartment, it's going to cost you right around almost the same. Like sometimes it's a thousand a month, 1500 a month, 1800 a month. And so you try to get a roommate to split the cost so that you're not giving your whole paycheck to your living. Um, and then once I got older and I got called up and then I was on the 40 man and then you start making more money. At that point, I could move into better places and I ended up moving kind of in on my own. Um, and so just kind of how it goes. So. Yeah, I got released that last uh, season in AAA and uh, moved back home. And now I live in a house because there's no more playing. So um, hopefully that kind of helps you guys with your questions. I've got a ton of questions on where do you live during the season. So um, I think that's the way, like I said, as you can kind of see too, every team's different. And so it changes from year to year, from organization to organization, from level to level everybody's different. So you're either going to be in a hotel. Usually you're going to be with a host family. You're going to be in an apartment. And the only guys that really get houses are guys that are in the major leagues that have kind of settled into their team. They've signed long-term contracts and, you know, they know they're going to be there for a while. Those are the guys that usually get houses, but everyone else usually not. So um, let me know if you guys have any more questions. I'll leave in the comment section below. I've been trying to answer as many as I can for you guys. Um, please subscribe to the channel if you're not done so already. Give this video a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. Share with all your friends. Check out our Instagram page, Antonelli Baseball, Twitter feed, Matt Antonelli 9. Check out the description box below where I put a bunch of links to books and uh, training tools that we use with all of our guys that I think you guys will, will like. Um, check out our website, AntonelliBaseball.com. It is still being built. Uh, we just moved it over to a new site, so it may not be up just yet, but it should be soon. And that's all I got. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you watching, and we'll talk to you later.